Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and one of the advantages of, we'll call it the Unity apocalypse of the last couple weeks, is that a lot of developers have been exposed to brand new game engines, and that's what I'm going to continue to do in this series. This is blank for Unity developers, an introduction to the other game engines that exist out there uh, that might be of interest to Unity developers, and from kind of a Unity perspective, and this is the next entry in the list. What you are looking at in front of you, this is Stride, and to be honest, from a Unity background, Stride may be one of the most comfortable decisions decisions you can make. First off, it is good at bringing 3D assets in. This is an FBX scene that I imported from the uh, uh, Humble Bundle for Cinti assets right now. As you can see, it came in pretty much flawlessly. I did take a little bit of time to bring in, but this is a non-trivial scene for sure, uh, and uh, gives you an idea of the uh, capabilities of this particular engine. So I'm going to show you things in a little bit more depth, but uh, this is the editing environment. This is Windows only. That is definitely one of the downsides to Stride. The tooling is on Windows only, but it can support a number of different platforms, including uh, your major mobile platforms, your major desktops, etc. But the development tools are very much tied uh, to .NET and to Windows in general. So uh, if that is a deal breaker, well, it was nice talking to you. But otherwise, stick around. This does have nice integration uh, into development tools. The actual project, your actual project here, is actually just a Visual Studio solution. So all of this stuff opens up as an opening up an SLN file, which is actually pretty cool cool. Uh, if you're looking at the user interface, you're going to find things pretty comfortable. Here is your typical scene graph. So everything that goes together to make up your world is available over here. Uh, your inspector is basically over here. It is called the property grid in this case. Instead of game objects, you have entities. Entities are basically the same thing as a game object. It is a thing that has positional space and an ID. So a pretty standard uh, kind of design pattern in game engines these days. You do have a variety of components that you can add to your game objects slash entities. Uh, so you see here, you even got things for doing uh, UI layouts, etc. Logic is done via scripts that are dragged and dropped in. Those scripts can be, uh, they're C-sharp based. Uh, you can have both synchronous and asynchronous scripts. And then otherwise, it's a very similar process. You are handling uh, callbacks, etc. The other nice thing you're going to find here is the... Um, the interface down here. So here is your asset view. Again, very similar to the way things work in the Unity environment. Uh, you have things like a programmable pipeline. So here is how it's set up. Uh, so coming in, you can do debug rendering right here. By the way, there are a variety of debug rendering options up here. So if you want to see how you know your normal maps your diffuse maps, etc. All of your views are toggleable over there, but we can do neat things here. So let's go to post-processing effects right here. And you're gonna notice over here into the property grid, we're going to get a different set of options. I go back here to the main scene with that selected. And then we can do things like add fog into our game world. There you see the immediate result. Things are, um, drag and drop editable over here. And of course, numerically editable as well. So you can come in here and do so uh, you got things like I turn ambient occlusion on, local reflections, etc. So you do have control over how the graphics pipeline works as well. This is a very mature engine from the uh, graphical rendering capabilities. It actually came from Silicon Studios, which inadvertently came from Silicon Graphics. Yes, SGI. Uh, this is one of their vestigial limbs, I suppose you could say. Uh, but it was originally released as an engine called Paradox. It was renamed to Zenco. Uh, then it was open sourced. Uh, it is now available open source under the MIT license. You can see some uh, interesting rendering effects from what we have done here. Do I have outline turned on? Maybe I don't. Oh yeah, let's turn outline on as well. So if you want to get that kind of cartoony render, you've got that option as well. So you got a ton of rendering capabilities here. Uh, so this guy is now an MIT open source project. Let's go to something a little bit more elaborate. This is uh, one of the demos that is available for it. It's called Starbreach. Uh, it shows you things like uh, loading the world in various different chunks. I've loaded all those chunks in already, but you do have that ability so you can design your game uh, in pieces that can be loaded in and out uh, dynamically. Now, one of the big questions you probably have coming from a Unity background is what about prefabs? Prefabs work. It's just fine. You see this character right here. This is a prefab. Opened as a prefab. You see prefab character. You can right click on here and you can go to uh, open prefab in editor. And there you will see how a prefab looks. So this prefab is made out of uh, a character, uh, a shooting target, uh, VFX. Again, you've got particle systems in place here as well. Uh, so come here. Again, everything breaks down is made up of subcomponents. 
Uh, you do have uh, full multi-texturing support for models that you brought in. Another thing you'll notice if I go to the root of this guy, you're going to see all of these various different pieces here. Well, each one of these is actually a script. So you see here we've got a camera controller as an example attached to this guy. Well, a camera controller is available right down here. Here is the script. There's a couple cool things about uh, Stride also in terms of editing. So look at this. I can actually open up a code editor directly inside of Stride. By the way, you can also open up your project uh, in Visual Studio. So if you'd rather edit the code over using a full-blown Visual Studio editor, and theoretically any editor that supports uh, SLN or solution files, so that should work with Visual Studio Code with their new uh, C Sharp Dev Kit stuff, and other editors work as well. But you see here, it is broken down into project packages over here, and you can... Uh, you can obviously edit and build directly from Visual Studio if that is your thing as well. Another cool thing you're going to see here, we'll go back to this particular example. So see all these properties are right here, public float, pitch, yaw, etc. Well, those, let's go back to our character here. Uh, so here, character selected, character con camera controller right here. Those are all exposed out to the editor. No special work needed. Uh, so the t there's really tight integration in between uh, the Stride game engine and the C Sharp programming language, which is actually very quite cool. Uh, and that's kind of the idea behind it. If you're used to um, using Unity uh, and C Sharp, you're going to find it immediately comfortable to switch over to Stride. Again, the renderer is quite nice. There are some flaws, of course, with Stride. Uh, one of the biggest ones is it doesn't have the catalog of proven games that you have with something like uh, Unity, and obviously that is a big deal. Uh, there are some uh, really cool scenes to get you up and going, such as this uh, full game environment right here. There is a new one they actually just released as well. Uh, from uh, GDC a couple of years back showing uh, animation in action. So uh, there are some great learning scenes. Uh, when you're actually just getting started with Stride, there is a launcher of sorts. So we have uh, this guy right here, which is on my wrong monitor. Let me just bring that in right here. Here is your basic launcher, uh, and you can basically bring down various different versions here. Another downside with Stride is their official releases. So this is an open source project. You can build it from code, but the 4.0 to 4.1, and 4.2 I think is coming next month, but it's been a year since 4.1 was released. So they gotta get these major releases coming faster for sure. Uh, there is a uh, community that you can actually talk to. They've got a Discord server where you can ask questions, etc. And we'll go ahead and uh, show you just the, the beginning of creating a new project. So you do have this uh, launcher uh, and you can see here various different options available. So you got a number of templates to get you up and going. Uh, so depending on what kind of game you're working on or if you're working on a mobile first title or something. And then you've got some templates to get you up and going as well. So you've got a top-down RPG style game, a third person uh, platformer template in here. We've got VR support as well. And we have a first person shooter template to get you going as well. And again, a number of samples to show you things like physics integration, input handling, and so on. Um, it's Oh, and we also have full-blown games, uh, Jumpy Jet, which I think is like a Flappy Birds type clone, and uh, Space Escape. So this one does illustrate how to create a 2D style game. So yes, 2D is also an option. There's not a lot of 2D specific toolings in there, so you're not going to find, I don't think there's tile mapping support as an example. Uh, but what there is actually is good documentation as well. So you're going to find this has a very Unity-like feel to it for sure. There are things I really like about it, again, like the ability to do code editing directly inside. I honestly don't understand how after all of these years you need to use a tool like Script Inspector on uh, Unity to make this work. So it does actually really speed up your workflow, but you'll find again, your project is literally a solution file. So this, it, the root, when you open this up, it is an SLN file. So all of the stuff within it, uh, you can open it up in Visual Studio and kind of have the same approach. So if you want to take more of a code first approach, that is an option with Stride as well. So if you're interested in checking out Stride, it is available at stride3d.net. Again, this is a free and open source cross-platform engine. The tooling, again, is Windows only, so that is definitely going to be a deal breaker to some of you. So if you want to primarily develop on a Mac or something, that is not an option here, although you can target those platforms. Um, 
And yeah, it's got a nice set of tooling here. It is MIT licensed. It is currently C Sharp 10 and .NET 6, although I do believe that uh, C Sharp 11 and .NET 7 are coming next month. Uh, the other thing to be aware of, it will work with uh, Rider, uh, Visual Studio Code, and Visual Studio as well. In terms of some of the major features here, obviously the big one is you have this full editing environment, which if you are from a Godot background, is going, sorry, a, a Unity background, it's going to feel quite familiar to you. On top of that, you do have a UI editor for doing, uh, you know, your UI work. You can also create it as a prefab and reuse UI elements. Uh, you do have support for nested prefabs. I know that was one of those things that took Unity quite a while to get. It is all here out of the box with Stride. Uh, I showed you very briefly the uh, graphics compositor, which makes it so you can customize your rendering pipeline uh, without, you know, a huge amount of complex detail. Although I do believe you can actually script plug in blocks in here, so you can actually do some even more advanced work there as well. Uh, there are some 2D tools, such as a sprite editor. Again, I think you're going to be missing things like tile map support, but it does support um, 2D and 2.5D development as well. You do have curve editing tools in there as well, the full blown scene editor we saw in action. Uh, it does definitely have uh, good solid graphics, uh, direct 3D. 11 and uh, but uh, DirectX 12 and Vulkan have been added as well, which is a nice addition. You have light probes, PBR materials, particle systems. They have their own shader language written on top of HLSL. Uh, you have post processing effects. We saw some of these in action, things like depth of bloom, uh, bloom, depth of field, uh, fog, and so on. Um, it, it's a very cool engine. It is completely free. It is open source. You do have things like stream streaming, scene streaming. So if you do have a super complex scene, you can break it up into chunks and stream them in as you need it. Full animation and animation blending in there. Uh, again, C Sharp scripting, currently C Sharp 10 and .NET 6 with 11 and .NET 7 coming very soon. AI navigation tools in there. It supports VR. Um, and yeah, and then I mentioned earlier on, there's multiple different options for your scripting. But here you can see uh, kind of you have asynchronous and synchronous scripts, and you're kind of taking the same approach that you have with Unity. Obviously, asynchronous scripts would be more like working with the job system, and synchronous scripts is your more traditional. You've got callbacks, start, update, cancel, and then you handle your code logic within them, whereas asynchronous scripts um, can be called, well, asynchronously, obviously, and they are handled via the execute function and the cancel function to shut things down. So if you're interested in learning Stride and you're coming from a Unity background, they've got a couple of documents that could be useful to you. Uh, first off, in their documentation, they have a Stride for Unity developers. It's sort of a Rosetta Stones of sorts to kind of maps you over. Again, here is Unity. Here is Stride. It's different names for same things. So Inspector is Property Grid. Um, your reference for the Inspector, your your Quick View is available here as references. You have your Asset View, which would be the, your Project Browser. Uh, your Hierarchy Panel is your Asset Editor, and so on. So you know, again, Scene Graph, Properties, Assets, 3D View pretty consistent. Uh, the, again, the Solution Explorer is straight out based off of your Visual Studio project. Uh, it is also configurable, literally drag and drop. I didn't showcase that in the editor, but you can actually grab tabs and move them around like so. So we can move this tab over to here, etc. So everything is configurable, drag and drop, and so on. Um, you can see here how terms map from one to the other. Hierarchy is entity tree, inspectors, property grid, broad, project browsers, asset view, scene view is scene editor, game object is entity, mono behavior is either sync script, async script, or startup script. Uh, yeah, it, it's again, there is this document for getting you up and going for, you know, here is the Unity version, here is the Stride version, and you're going to find it's it's very consistent. So you're going to find Stride is one of the uh, smoothest paths out of the Unity engine uh, of the options that are out there. Uh, the other thing is when this whole Unity thing happened back on September 14th, they put together this quick document kind of describing the difference between Unity and Stride, the, the top level features of Stride, other things like .NET hot reload support, which is actually pretty cool. Um, and various different features and, and changes between the two. So there is some documentation to move you over uh, from the world of Unity to the world of Stride uh, to, to kind of make the transition smoother. Stride definitely saw a bit of a boom in their community thanks to uh, Unity's mistakes. Uh, it's, it's a very polished engine. Again, at its core, it was developed by Silicon Studios as an 
A slash AAA style engine, and then they ended up open sourcing it. It's been a little slower in the development than I would like to see, but I think a lot of it is happening in private. I'd be interested to see how big the 4.2 update actually is, uh, but do be aware this is an open source project, and you may find yourself building it from source because there's all kinds of editing happening on the. Um, the dev side of things. It's just they don't do major releases. They do Unity releases over here. Uh, sorry, actually they don't at all. Uh, they do um, updates across here. So you see here, we got these minor increments across the board as you go through on the code side of things. The only problem is when you're actually dealing with the, uh, the editing environment, like the uh, actual stride launcher, the last version that you have available is that 4.1 uh, version from earlier on. Um, and by the way, if you're interested in picking up the asset that you see here, this is uh, the Cinti bundle. This is the sci-fi mega city from it. <laughs> I've really screwed up the graphics on it. Uh, but this is going on right now in Humble. It's an exceptional deal. It works incredibly well in this engine and others. Uh, and I will have a link for that down below as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, that there is Stride. Again, here is one of the examples available. I will have this in the linked article down below. It is called Starbreach. Gives you an idea of exactly how things work. But as you can see from this experience, you do have support for prefabs. You have nested prefabs. You have scripting in C Sharp, etc. It should be very, very comfortable for Unity developers. Let me know what you think of Stride in general, and I shall talk to you all later. Goodbye.